Hey y'all, it's Black or Rave and I have a special video for y'all today. It's gonna be my first ever story time. Y'all voted for it and ask and you shall receive. So get your tea, get your popcorn, go ahead and get snuggled up and I'm just gonna dive right into it. Okay, so first things first, I want to introduce you guys to my new cat, Juno. So for all of you that don't know, I adopted a new cat last year, 20, the end of 2022 last year. Her name is Juno. Say hey, everybody. Girl, don't look look happy to be here. Look, look, at, look right there with the camera. No. Did, <laughs> she's sleepy, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, mama. I'm going to put you down. Yeah, so that's Juno and that's my little baby girl. I adopted her from the shelter that's like 30 minutes from me. And just a quick background, they picked her up as a stray cat. So she was out in the woods somewhere and they found her and they took her in. And when I got her, she wasn't even two pounds yet. So she wasn't able to be neutered um, and I wasn't able to take her home. So I had to wait for her to reach the you know the weight limit minimum two pounds to get neutered and then when i picked her up i guess right before they were able to rescue her she was bitten by something so she had an abscess on her right thigh so i brought her home and she was literally only two pounds she just got out of surgery from her neuter and then she had an abscess on her leg and my baby was tore up i literally nursed her back to health and she's been at my hip ever since then um, with my other cat, Corel, the black cat that you guys should absolutely know about, they get along pretty well where he's like real chillax and real just like, all right, y'all paid me to be here. Like that's him. He just real just like this all day. She's off the chain. Like that's why I said she's sleepy right now. But when she gets some energy in her, I mean, she is bouncing off the walls, but she's also still kind of a baby. So she has like that toddler energy. But now that y'all know what's going on with the cat, I can get you started until the weekend. So there was this girl that I was talking to, very sweet, very beautiful, pretty cool girl. And I had scheduled for this weekend to go take a flight. And she planned out like all of these events for the weekend and all this stuff. It was gonna be real sweet, real cute. And so I needed somewhere to put my cats while I was out of town for the weekend. So my sister agreed to watch them and while I was packing up, getting them out to the car, getting all my stuff out to the car. I don't know why I tried to do this, y'all. Now that I'm about to say it out loud, it just doesn't even sound right. But I had my one cat on this shoulder and my other cat on this shoulder. <laughs> so I'm trying to walk them both into the car and there was a dog walking by. Now my black cat, the older cat, Kuro, he's real like... If something frightens him, he'll like run off the other way, but he'll come right back to me. I mean, I can literally walk him like a dog. He will go outside and wander off and come right back to me. He's cool. But my little baby, she was a stray. So any little thing will set her off. And when I tell you, she the, she put her claws in me and jumped off me and took off. Y'all. So now I'm just trying to get Kuro, my black cat, in the car, and now I'm out here in, in the bushes and everything looking for her everywhere. Couldn't find her. And it's also becoming prime time for me to catch my flight to go. So I'm looking, I'm looking, but I gotta go. I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, but I gotta go. And I'm just like, can't find her. I couldn't find her, y'all, and it broke my heart because I that was only like, I want to say maybe two months after I got her. So I just got attached to her, I just got her and look at that, I already lost her. I was like so embarrassed and just sad and just hurt, like, you know? I have her microchip and for all of you that don't know, microchip is when you, they put like an implant inside of the cat to where if someone finds the cat and they take them to like any shelter or any animal hospital, they can scan their body and see if they have that microchip and they'll see that it's registered to you and they'll be able to contact you and say, hey, we found your cat or your dog, whatever pet that you have microchip. So I was worried because I know she could have been anywhere by then, but I knew through the grace of God, she hopefully would turn up. So I'm like, you know what? I gotta go. Hopefully she'll be all right. <laughs> so I left, I dropped my cats off and then my dad drove me to the airport 
And see, my dad, he is a uh, military strict, boom, 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 bullet point. This is how we're going to do things. So my dad's like, oh, yeah, you're good. If you got all your stuff together, you just need to be at the airport like an hour before your flight. Really, daddy? An hour? I should have known that was not the advice for me. That's the advice for him because when he leaves to go to the airport, all his stuff is going to be together. He's going to be able to walk straight into the gate, check in his bag, go through TSA, hop on the flight and whatever. Raven does not have it all together all the time. So I should have known that that advice was not for me. You know, sometimes advice is for you and sometimes it's for somebody else. And you gotta know, based off of the person who you are, what advice is for you? And I don't know why why I believe this man, because I'm just like, oh yeah, that sounds right. It wasn't right, y'all, because I got to the airport and he dropped me off. Then I realized I left something in the car. So the way the airport is, once you drop somebody off, you have to go. And then if you have to come back around for them, it takes a minute. So I have to wait for my dad to come all the way back around, get my, get my stuff, then I went back inside and I thought it was going to be okay to fly with Frontier. Y'all, it's just mistake after mistake and I've learned from all of them, but I thought it was going to be okay to fly with Frontier, not knowing that you have to pay for carry-on bags. I thought you only have to pay for checked-in bags. So I only brought a carry-on thinking that was going to be okay. So I'm going and then I realize I have to pay for my carry-on bag. So I'm trying to do it online. The clock is ticking, you guys. Remind you, I got there an hour before. It already took about 20 minutes for me to go all the way inside. I realized I forgot my stuff and had my dad come back around. Now I'm trying to pay for the carry-on baggage. My phone is low and slow. It's a mess. So I just gave up, tried to go through the kiosk to pay for the baggage, and now it's not letting me. So I'm like, what do I do? I asked one of the gentlemen that's kind of like steps in to help people on the kiosk. And he tells me I have to go stand in the long line. So I'm like, oh Lord, the clock is ticking and I'm getting nervous. I stand in the long line for them to tell me, oh yeah, the reason that it won't let you purchase um, the bag and check in is because it cuts off. I think it was 45 minutes before the flight. Don't quote me. It was either 30 to 45 minutes, something like that. And they said, yeah, once it reaches that time, it won't let you check in. And you you basically missed your flight, even though you could make it. If we would let you go, you basically missed it. I'm just like, why? So now my frustration is 10 out of 10, you guys. I lost my cat. I missed my flight. I'm making silly mistakes. I'm just like, let me take it slow. Let me take it easy. What other flights do you have for tonight? None. Okay. Then they told me if I went over to the other flight desks is a million of them i know it's a specific flight desk for if you miss your flight or rebookings and st things such as that they would be able to help me there so i went over there and they told me that the next flight they had was for the morning i think it was for 6 a.m don't quote me 6 a.m flight and then i would have to pay like a 90 dollars rebook fee I've already spent more money than I would have liked to. So I'm like, okay, well, what's the way around the fee? They said, if you just show up for the flight and there's any seats left, which that clerk, he believed there would definitely be seats left because the flight was already halfway empty for the time that I was there at the airport. He's like, just show up. They'll have a seat for you and they'll let you on without you having to go ahead and pay the rebook fee to have a certain seat. I was like, okay, cool. See you in the morning. So... Told my daddy, come on, daddy, I missed the flight. <laughs> my dad's just like, come on, Raven. Do better, man. <laughs> How you messed that up? Oh my God, no, just take me home before I wallow in sorrow. And before I go further into the story, I just want to remind you guys that this was a Friday night. So my girl, she planned like stuff for us to do Saturday and Sunday. So I'm really pressed for time because I only get Saturday and Sunday and then I don't want to get there extra late on Saturday and now I only have one day and then I'm messing up the, you know, the dates that she had planned. So obviously the first flight leaving Saturday morning is the flight I need to have my butt on. And y'all are not going to believe this. I showed up to the airport at 4.45. <laughs> 
flight leaves at 6 a.m. They won't let you check in later than um like 5.15. And I show up at 5.45. Y'all, my brain was fried because when I left Friday night, it was already 12 something in the morning. So then I got three hours of sleep and had to be right back at the airport. I don't even know why I didn't just stay in my butt at the airport, but I was just tired and irritated and did not get to the airport on time. Did not get to the airport at a reasonable time. I'm trying to explain to my girl what's going on. I can see she's getting irritated. Like here I am showing up at the airport 445, like that's better. I had to go stand in the same line at the rebook flight desk. So there's this long line for the rebook flight desk and it's only one person there. It's only one person helping everybody. So the line is moving terribly slow. So I'm already just sitting here antsy like, cause the line is moving so slow. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why is this happening again? I finally get to the front of the line. I'm being as respectful as possible. Now I may have seemed like a little off because I'm literally like walking to the airport when I open half asleep, but I'm just, you know, being normal, being respectful. Hi, I missed my flight last night. Just trying to get on a um a waiting waiting list seat for this flight leaving at uh six. If you could, you know, give me a ticket so I can go on about my day. Uh, just a just a, a ratchet, disrespectful lady. Um, she's just like <laughs> clacking. Mm, I don't think I don't know. Let me see. Uh, clacking, looking on the computer taken forever and i'm just i'm being so patient i'm just like mm -hmm. yeah but i just want to be like lady let's move it we got things to do people to see planes to catch pussy to get please let's go please come on please lord that's how i feel inside but i'm just trying to be so calm so collected Ooh. I'm just in my head like John 7, 24. Do not judge by appearances, but judge by the right judgment. So I'm like, all right, relax. Probably having a bad day. It's okay. And what's the other verse in Luke? Do, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Because I'm just getting so irritated and impatient at this point. And then she says, um, if you pay $90 for the rebook fee, I'll put you on right now. And I was like, no, can you put me on the waiting list? Cause there's seats available, right? So you can put me on the waiting list. And if I get there and then all the seats are taken, then that's the L I'm, I'll be okay with taking because that's the decision that I chose. But I do not want to pay the $90 rebook fee. And then she goes, oh, I mean, visibly rolled her eyes and made a noise. And I'm just like, what is happening? It's too early. You know what I'm saying? We just woke up. It's a beautiful day that God gave us. We don't even have to do all this. We don't have to have none of that energy. But she was just, I mean, she was just coming at me. And I'm just like, lady, please. When I tell y'all she was sitting on the computer just looking all, I don't know what she was doing. It was taking forever. Then one of her coworkers that should have been helping her at the desk came and they were laughing and talking and, you know what I'm saying? And then clack, 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 clack. Oh, it's too late for you to get on the flight now. Sorry. When I tell y'all I wanted to be like, Aah! I could literally feel my ears get hot. I was just like, ma'am, what can you do for me? I, how, I mean, how how far is it over the, the limit? She was like, it's only like two minutes over the time that she could have gone, but I can't, I can't do it. I can't even override it. And I'm just like, no, when's the next flight? The next flight was a layover over here. It would have had me to the city where my girl was, I mean, by like one o'clock. And I'm just like, you know what? Maybe this is a sign from the Lord. Maybe this is something that's not supposed to happen. So I have to tell her, I promise you, I have been trying. I've been trying my best. This, this is my fault. I take responsibility. This is my L. I'll pay for whatever um, dates you set up that you have to pay for in advance for reservations or whatever. But I'm going home. <laughs> I give up. When, when Once it's time to just let it go, it's time to let it go. But basically, she did not like that. I feel like she thought I was purposely missing it or didn't try hard enough, which is ridiculous because I paid a lot of money for the, the flight to go there and the flight to return. And obviously, it was something I really wanted to do. I spent money on clothes for it and everything. So, you know, sometimes stuff just doesn't work out and people don't understand what's going on when they're not there. And yeah, we kind of fell off after that. 
and that's okay. No beef, no, no spite, no sorrow here. I just learned a lot of lessons the, that night and that day. I learned a lot of lessons. And a good ending to the story is that a week later, I got a call at work from um, Animal Hospital, like 30 minutes from me. And they said, hey, we got your cat. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And the funniest thing is when I got there to pick her up, they told me that the woman that found her and dropped her off said she had her the whole week. Like she probably found her like the day after I lost her. And she was going to keep my cat, y'all. But they told me she was leaving town and she wasn't able to take care of her while she was out of town. So that's when she ended up giving her to the animal hospital. They scanned her microchip and they found her. And I mean, right after work, went straight there to pick her up. Y'all just do not know how ecstatic, how blessed I was. I was so happy, <laughs> so happy because, oh man, that's, that's what I needed to recover from that weekend. That was just punching me up and beating me in my face. That was like my soothing. To end this story time, the moral of the story is one, if you don't have your stuff together all the time, show up to the airport hours early. And everybody knows this, but you know, learn from me. Show up to the airport like two, three hours early. Just show up the day before if you really don't have it together and just camp. I mean, the airport, they have food and bathrooms. They have seats you can lay out and just live there, really. Just, just show up early. Don't be like me. Learn from me. Second moral microchip your animal your pet if you have a cat you can do it for dogs too and if anything ever happens and they end up at an animal hospital or a veterinarian that's the same thing an animal hospital and veterinarian lord or a animal shelter they'll be able to scan the microchip and give you a call or email or whatever contact that you link to that microchip and third any of my pet owners this is the best advice i'm gonna give you if you don't already know get an air tag for your pets and then you can go on amazon or anywhere that sells uh pet collars and get a collar where it can actually hold the air tag and so if you have an iphone you can track them so i don't know if y'all can kind of see here you see that's my my little girl that's where she is it says she's with me and that's kuro my big black cat and he's with me it just makes you feel better. It makes it easier. If anything was to happen to them, you can literally track them. It'll send you like the GPS location directly to them. And once you get close, you can press the button for it to make a noise off of the collar. And I mean, it's the bomb.com. But with that, I hope y'all were entertained by this. I hope you learned some valuable lessons and strap yourselves into your seats because we got more content coming for y'all. I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.